11 of a USBA junior welterweight title fight. <laughs> Mallette has a lot to gain, and Freddie, of course, has a lot to lose. Well, as far as I can see, this thing is going to go right down to the wire, and uh, whoever wins the last round may very well win this fight. This is just another one of those rounds that, hey, I'll ask you folks watching at home, how do you score this round? Millette, now, now again, is he going to steal this round away? And Freddie comes back. Freddie just short with the right hand that time. Needs to throw the left hook after he throws the right hand, though, Bob. If you miss, a lot of times that left hook will make up for it if you throw it after you throw the right hand. Inside of 30 seconds to go in the 11th round. Uh, and right away they call it uh, another slip. Kenny Bayless right on top of it. Second time that's happened in the fight, and Kenny on top of it both times. slightly to uh, to Teron Millette uh, just based on the aggressive uh, and this, you know, in, 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 it's not being as an effective an aggressor as you need to be, but uh, nevertheless, he's coming forward, Freddie's going back, and uh, so I have to give it on that to, to uh, Millette. Now listen to me, son, listen to me. Show you the slip. As the legs get crossed up and down, he goes. And the good thing, as I mentioned when we started live, that uh, Free Kenny Bayless in there immediately to let the fighters know where they stand that uh, this is a slip stop the action. Yeah. All right, we're yeah. coming up to round 12 in a fight that I've got Millette, and I think, Spinny, you've got Millette slightly out in front now, too. So it should be an interesting 12th round. Both of the guys have to turn it up a notch. This is a championship time for both of them. Freddie Pendleton, you look for the experience of a, of a champion. For Millette, you look for the aggressiveness of a guy trying to wrest the title away. This is the fifth time in his career that Freddie Pendleton has been to the 12th round of a fight. It's the first time in the career of Theron Millette that he's ever experienced being in the 12th round. Neither guy looks uh, exceptionally fatigued. Freddie's jaw's not ha uh, hanging. His, Millette really hasn't pushed him an awful lot. Neither fighter has been hurt. Neither fighter has been down. Been a good evenly matched uh, fight, Bob. Styles make fights, and I think these guys, if you know boxing, it's uh, two good-looking fighters. Just in different areas in their careers, that's all. Neither fight it down, neither fight it cut. Nobody's shaking during the course of the fight. Seesaw battle all throughout. And this round is just exactly like all the rest have been. There's nothing, I mean, nobody's come out firing and, and, and snorting and fire coming out of the nostrils with this thing either. It's just a, been a tough strategic battle, and both guys are going to think they won this fight when it's over. And you know what, for Millette, Bob, even if, the, if he doesn't get the decision, which I think he probably will if he keeps going like this, it's still a win-win for him because he goes the distance with a champion, and he performs well. There's a lot of things when Teron looks at this tape that he and his dad can, you know, can work on, too. To, to move up and fight in this class that he now has certainly proven that he's worthy to be in here no matter how the decision goes. For Freddie, he can really ill afford to, to lose at this point in his career, Bob, and that's why I, I, I say for Millette, it's, it's a win-win situation, and you're right, there are a lot of things, little nuances he can improve upon. Freddie's up on his toes, he's certainly strong enough, he's in a terrific condition, he's still bouncing around, we're in the 12th round. Is Millette trying to do something to catch him off guard? Wild with the right hand is Pendleton. Millette tries to stay on top, but he doesn't jump on. Little blood trickling from the right nostril of Freddie Pendleton. When Millette gets inside, Bob, he doesn't quite know how to put two and three and four combinations together consistently. And that's what he's got to work on when he sees tapes of this. It's difficult against a guy like uh, Freddie Pendleton, who's uh, a champion and fought all those great champions. Inside of 30 seconds remaining in the fight. There's not going to be a knockout here. This thing's going to go to the scorecards, and it's going to be a tough 
decision and tough spots for one guy. You know, here's, a, here's an example here. It wouldn't bother me at all if this fight was called a draw, because I don't think the guy won the fight. Well, let's see who pulls out the last uh, 10 seconds here. It's, of course, Millette coming forward. Freddie backing up. All right, there's the bell. The fight's all over, and now we'll have to wait for the decision of the judges. I've got the fight very, very close. I thought uh, perhaps that Teron Millette might have just eked out a victory here, but we'll have to wait and see. Could go either way, but I have it the same way, Bob. Uh, Millette, uh, in my opinion, wins, uh, and he'll be the new USBA Junior Welterweight Champion. Flurry, which could have uh, stolen it for uh, Millette in the end. Good left uh, jab, one of the few he's thrown throughout the fight. Right to the face of Freddie Pendleton. Guys working inside. But he... Those few final flurries at the end may have been what stole it. All right, Jimmy Lennon is set, so let's get the decision with a top ring announcer, Jimmy Lennon Jr. Ladies and gentlemen, after 12 rounds of boxing, we have a unanimous decision here. The score totals. Al Siciliano scores it 117 to 111. Carol Castellano, 115 to 113. Cindy Martin sees it 116 to 112. All three in favor of the winner. And the new USBA Junior Welterweight Champion, Tehran Trimp Millet. Evander Holyfield is a battle-tested warrior. He's the heavyweight champion of the world. He's beaten everyone from...